It's the like this, it's the like this, ain't the like this, ain't the like broke as hell. Love and Hip Hop New York season, I don't know, episode y'all already know. Love and Hip Hop New York, what is y'all doing, girl? I'm expecting y'all to tug me, to pull me in, to make me watch. But the only thing I'm doing is counting down the days into Love and Hip Hop Miami because this season is dry. This whole season of Love and Hip Hop New York, I think we're on episode three or something. Girl, y'all just ain't giving me something I can feel, something I can use, something I can put away. Matter of fact, there is something I can put away with this show. I can just put it on the shelf and come back to it later. Like, girl, she like the cream of corn can just sitting up there like, girl, when I ain't got no other vegetables, okay? Maybe I'll cook her when I don't got no more starches or something. But y'all are like the cream of corn, and I love cream of corn, girl, but it's not something I cook on a regular. That's when I cook when I was in my struggle days. So y'all ain't giving me apple days y'all give me back in the day back in the day and I want y'all to go back in the day would give us an episode where it made us pull us in like y'all it's just it's let me get to it I'm always complaining we're always complaining about these shows and what they're doing but I think that it's going to be an action about what it is because it's just like girl y'all are just not learning from this y'all not learning from this at all I need Tyra Banks to come front and center so we got our girl little mo I love me some little mo when she's on TV okay I missed her. I want to see if she's going to turn up this season, but she's going to be doing some praise is what I do, is what I do. That's where Lil Mo going to be serving us this season. And I'm I'm sort of here for it. I'm like, okay, Lil Mo, but I want the theatrics that she always give us because Lil Mo is a character and I love her to death. Um, so her and Rima are talking about marriages and um, babies and stuff. You know, Rima and um, her husband, Papoos, are talking about in vitro. I mean, doing something to have a baby, work on it. And Lil Mo got a whole football team, soccer team, a Super Bowl party everything going on in her family, and she just said, girl, you know, it ain't easy. So, Papu says, like, how many children do y'all have, you know, with you all? Like, how many y'all got? And they said they got one. I think that's what Pap wants. Pap's like, I have children, but I want a child with Rima, but I'm not understanding that. I, I'm not understanding that whole, but I don't have any kids. I'm not planning on having any kids anytime soon. I need to be making at least $800,000 a year before I have some children. They're too expensive for me. I need to be able to whisk away and fly and do some other stuff. I need to be Mariah Carey to the bullshit. Dream Doll and Mariah Lynn. Dream Doll and Mariah Lynn are cool. Now, everybody's saying that Dream Doll came from Bad Girls Club or something. I don't know what she does, but I just know what she's trying to do on this show is just turn up every minute she got. Mariah Lynn, girl, I got some words for you, sis. I got a couple of words for you. I'm going to be talking to you in just a second, but not right now. Anais and Navarro. Anais, our girl, Anais, girl. BH1 shaded the hell out of your ass. BH1 did a blog post, and they showed some back-in-the-day pictures of you. And, girl, you was right here looking like the crimson chin, honey. Um, Anais, the only thing I have to say is um, you look completely different from how you did. You were beautiful then. You're beautiful now in some type of way. But um, I just want people to love themselves and, and to love on themselves, to like everything, every imperfection. I know there's a lot to say, even with myself, because there are some things that, you know, I was like, damn, I wish that I looked like this. But what, what teaches us? And we have to understand and unpack what makes us feel that type of way. Because if we were around people that look like us, we wouldn't feel that type of way. If we wasn't taught that this is beauty and this is not, we wouldn't feel that type of way. So we need to love ourselves. I know it's difficult to do, especially when you're in the industry. But a nice girl, what's the tea? You ain't even that dark no more. You're very light, sis. What's the tea? New foundation? But Anais did cry. She's talking to Navarro and she says that the label that she was with, you know, just, you know, used her and abused her and everything. And she was just crying and breaking down. And I appreciate her for sharing it because that's how the industry is. That's how people are. It's not saying to normalize it, but not trying to normalize it at all. But you need to understand that this is what it is. Like, we can break it. It's going to take a minute to break it. But this is how these folks are. And some of these folks are just sucking the life out of you. Some people, we have people around us that's trying to suck everything out of us, girl. <laughs> Girl, that's a mess. But you got folks that are trying to suck the energy out of you, your very existence. You got people trying to suck the financial being of you out of you. Um, it's a whole bunch of stuff. I have a person recently that are trying to suck the energy out of me because I'm not willing to like stop what I'm doing to help them out anymore. Girl, no, I'm not going to be helping you out. The same Negro that's breaking your back in needs to be breaking their back to try to help you. I can't be doing all this for you and then the man that's around here busting you wide open ain't even doing nothing. So, girl, what does that say? I'm not getting anything out of it. Not that I want something out of it, but you need to ask that person that's getting all the good stuff to help you out. Because I don't mind helping people, but girl, like, you need to be trying to help yourself. That's not making no sense, honey. Sophia the body is talking to James R. James R. 
It's just a cute face with no lyrical talent, no nothing. He's just a cute face. That's it. That's, that's it. And a Batmobile looking hairline. I mean, girl, it is what it is. He's talking to Sophia the body and he's saying that I, he wants her to be in his bag or whatever video that he's doing. And he got a record. Okay, spin records. He got a record that he's trying to do and he wants Sophia the body to be in it. Um, a scheme that's tied set up to come to us. With the boo. <laughs> That's exactly all it is. It's nothing, nothing, uh, nothing, nothing. Like, Sophia Body is pretty, but she said she wants to be a DJ and all that type of stuff. We're going to see how that works out for her. Good luck, sis. One thing that James R. said that was kind of troubling was when he said, when I offer a woman that, you know, that I care about the world, she needs to be trying to protect it. What if she don't want it? She might not want it. Like, girl, that's what's wrong with you, man. Just because you offering a woman something means she needs to take it and take and, and cater to it and... Like, girl, that's not how it works. They probably don't like you, James R, because you probably, you know what, James R gives me that image of a guy who's all this, but when it comes to this stroke, he putting in shrimp, um, shrimp hits, and that's about it, girl. It's not very effective. Bitch Poodles is back, and he's saying, Navarro, you need to make sure that these women understand each other and play their positions in the bedroom, whatever. Y'all know that's how Rich Poodles think. He wants Navarro to get Anias and get his girl, uh, what's her girl named Ashley, in the same room and talk to them and get it together because they got to work together to get this money, get this bread, get this dough. Um, hopefully Navarro learns from the mistakes that Rich Poodles has learned and did and showed us and we ain't paying attention to. Hopefully that happens real soon. I like me some Juju. I love Juju. She's such a beautiful, um, just a beautiful chocolate woman. I love her. I just, I just want to, I love me some Juju. So Juju is talking to Remima and she's, you know, having a conversation about you know her life and what she got going on what she's trying to do and what's going on in her relationship Juju talks about her, you know her wanting to be pregnant and she felt like she was less than a woman because she wasn't able to provide her um, boyfriend or husband a baby she said I felt like less than and Rima had to tell us that girl no that's not what it is and that's what we've been taught like this is motherhood you're not a woman unless you're you know giving birth and you're doing all this I have friends that have always been questioned why you don't have no kids you got this and that why you don't have no children and yet y'all want to pressure folks to have kids but then when it comes time to raising them and do all that y'all ain't there kids are expensive I don't care what nobody say I don't give a damn how much assistance you provided one of my girls Tequila who I love very much very intelligent black woman and if I ever get to the point where I'm coined up I would definitely help my beautiful black sister because I love her she explains all the time how it is you know her being a single black mother and how she you know navigates this world of taking care of her child and sometimes having to take something from herself like it's it's I see it and I appreciate her sharing that with me because I'm like it's expensive it reminds me of my mother and father what they have to go through to make sure they're raising you know my aunt's kids it just goes to show you that y'all pressure folks for having kids but there's a lot of stuff that comes with that it's like it's expensive it's expensive like it's a lot like girl you got it like somebody was saying how much it costs for you know to cover themselves and their child um, insurance wise it's like $800 a month that's a lot of money that's some people's rent that's more than some people's rent so it's hard out here so Juju I felt bad for her when she was expressing you know how she felt less than Juju you are a beautiful black woman don't feel bad that you're you know that you had some situations and stuff and it might not be you it might be the man like a lot of time women you know when they are unable to um, conceive sometimes we feel like sometimes women feel like it's just their fault but it might be the man's fault it, they might have something that's going on but it's all Often time the women rather for it to be them because their man can't take a hit to their ego like that. I mean, girl, a man find out that he can't, you know, he can't provide a child, girl, he will, he will just completely collapse. What keeps men walking around on this earth are their egos, girl. Their egos are their spine, okay? And if you pull that out of them, they're gonna, they're gonna brrr, real quick. Little Mo says she has converted to Islam. She's done her stuff, and she's over here. Praise is what I do. It's what I do. Good for you, little Mo. Um, I'm glad that you found peace and whatever good for you, sis. Um, she's talking to her, her boo thing, her husband, whatever he, he is this week. Because, little Mo, you know, every time we do turn around, girl, you got a new man. And, girl, I'm trying to stop turning around. But, little Mo, we love you. We love what you do, honey. It's cute. Um, and she's talking to her husband. And, you know, they have a conversation about, you know, how it is in the industry. And, you know, his her boy, her husband was saying, because I don't remember his name, honestly. He was saying that, you know, he has to be selfish. He's going to have to focus getting back in the ring and get that bread. He got to take care. He got to do what he got to do. And Lil Mo got to get back in the studio. And he was just saying how, you know, sometimes you got to be selfish to be successful. And some folks are like, I don't see that. Yes, girl, it is real tea. Sometimes you have to be selfish in order to succeed. And that doesn't mean it's right, but that's just the, the thing that goes on. 
Listen and pay attention because I did a blog on this on kingofreeze.com. Make sure you're checking out how Tamika uh, was told and pressured by, you know, the label and stuff that she needs to have an abortion to um, or get out of the group because, like, girl, you can't do both. It's just not going to happen. Look how women are treated in the industry and the world, like the working world. Like, girl, like, you need this time off to take care of your kids. You need this and that. But if they don't, y'all call them a bad parent or whatever. Like, girl, it just goes to show you that the industry is very selfish. Um, and, I, and I feel like I have the privilege to be selfish like that. I don't have any children. I'm a male. I don't have to worry about taking care of no kids and nothing. I don't have any children and stuff. So I can, you know, do all this stuff. But sometimes I do like love and affection, like Future be saying. But sometimes there is some nights where I'll be in the bed and I'll be like, I wish I had someone I can talk to every night consistently to just make me feel good. No, that's not a plea for anybody to just send me an inbox and everything. But I do appreciate folks checking up on me every once in a while. Because it is, it is hard out here. And sometimes I do go in a state of depression depression where I don't want to be bothered. And, and like, and sometimes I do want to be bothered, but I don't know how to be bothered. So I know how the entertainment business works because I have to focus on everything that's going on. Sometimes I don't have time for myself, and, I, and it's hard to explain it to somebody. And my girl Shaw off of Kiss and Tell Radio, one of the podcasts that I love to death. I'm actually working on a blog post of all the podcasts that I listen to and the ones that you should check out. Uh, but the Kiss and Tell with Shar, um, Kendall, and Jace, y'all to check it out. I love them. They just they're my they're therapeutic to me. And they just do everything for me. Y'all shout out to Shar. I love her so much. Oh, Juju, I hope you can figure it out, girl. Don't feel pressured. You still got it, sis. Ashley and Anaya's talk, and I don't know what for. Um, they got it together. They cool, I guess. All right. Bianca and Dream Doll are sitting at the Last Supper table, and girl, it might be the Last Supper because they're not finna get back. They're not finna be cool. They're just not. And Bianca just letting Dream Doll know, like, girl, I have a problem with your friend. I'm not interested in her. She's been popping off, and every time I see her and she pop off, I'm a pop her, and that's just what it is. And Dream Doll just like, well, you ain't gonna do that because that's my friend, and you gotta understand my position. Girl, I'm so tired of y'all talking about position like y'all permanently playing checkers. Like, girl, go sit down. You don't even know how to play chess or checkers, girl. You don't even know how to play ping pong. On. Go away. Like, Dream Doll was just, I wanted to like her, but it was just, she was just overly like, oh, girl, you ain't gonna do my friend like that. It's just like, girl, this is a storyline. That's all it is. And Bianca said, girl, I'm just letting you know, when you do do that, I'm gonna pop off. Bianca, girl, focus on your music, girl. That's what you need to be. You've been talking about an album for three decades now. We still don't hear it or see it. I was a little bit sad when I watched Little Mo have a conversation with her son, Justin. Not just because his name was Justin. But, you know, Justin said he has Googled and he has found images and pictures and stuff alleging that um, um, Little Mo's husband has a, um, has been cheating on her. And you know, Mo said, what you doing Googling? And, like, children Google. Like, we say Google all the time. Like, Google this, Google this. Like, so y'all got to understand that children going to be understanding Y'all have we have got to understand that children know how to use um like technology. So you know, Justin's been Googling stuff and he's been finding stuff about Lil Mo. Lil Mo was a little bothered about it. She was like, I don't want my son to be dealing with the stuff that I dealt with because some of that stuff on social media is very hateful and it gets to me. Definitely understand. I know how it is, Lil Mo girl. Um, that's just that's just the, that's just the nature of the beast. I hate it, but um, Lil Mo, like, how do you deal with that? How do you protect your child from something like that? That's difficult because a lot of celebrities have tried it and been unsuccessful. Oh, I get on my favorite girl. What's going on, Mariah Lynn? Come a little closer, girl. Now nah, back up because you smell like mayonnaise. Mariah Lynn thought it was cute to wear a box braids in this scene with her and Sophia the Body. So James R and Sophia the Body doing something. I don't know what are they doing. Making some music, making something, making records. And and Mariah. Lynn walks in, she sees this, and she's just like, girl, what's going on? Why are you laying up with my man? So she pops Sophia, and she going off on um, James R, and it's just a bunch of mess, but the author didn't even care about all that. I was concerned about why Mariah Lynn has on box braids. I just, I, I, I don't understand. Are we dragging Mariah Lynn for having box braids? And some people say, well, I don't understand. Why are we doing this and that, 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 ooh, bah, 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 bah. A lot of people didn't understand why I asked that question. So let me break that down to you, because I feel like we need to have a conversation real quick. Mariah Lynn is white. Old people were saying, oh, she's not white, she's Puerto Rican, and Leah, I I love you, sis. I love you, boo. I, this is not to you at all. But a lot of people saying, well, she's white, she's Puerto Rican, she's mixed, she's Italian, da 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 She's white passing. I don't know who told y'all that police officers are pulling folks over and asking them for their ancestry DNA test. But when a police officer or such and such sees them, or a person in society sees them, white people see them, they're going to see them as white. Nobody's asking you your heritage or that and that. She looks white. She looks white, and that's what, and that's why we have these conversations about stuff like that. Because Mariah Lynn is able to maneuver spaces and stuff, unlike people of color can and black people. She looks white. 
she looks white. And the reason why I come hard on that is because I was in the army for seven years. I remember how hard it was for black women to wear styles like that, to keep, you know, protect you know, their hair and make sure that they, you know, they're able to, you know, wear their patrol cap and such and, you know, have you or whatever. I remember being in the army and black women could not wear different styles. And we already understand the military, the army, whatever, um, is catered to white people and white women. Um, they don't understand black hair and why we wear our hair and certain stuff like this and why it doesn't fit in this and why we have to do all that. They don't understand that. We don't have, a lot of us don't have straight hair. A lot of us don't have curly hair. A lot of us have kinky hair. And sometimes, you know, braids and stuff and like that are the best things to use to make sure that we're able to do our job. My best friend used to get braids anytime we did any type of um, long type of um, work, like we were gone like for a week or two, she would get braids because it was easy for her to manage, like it was easy for her to manage. And she did that. So Mariah Lynn does not have to worry about stuff like that. She doesn't, so I'm not interested in a white passing white individual wearing black hairstyles when black women wear that shit. It's looked at as like an unkept and old oh, girl, that's, that's ghetto. But when someone like Mariah Lynn wears it, it's like, oh, this is catchy, this is edgy. No, it's not. It's cultural appropriation. A black woman responded, and I'm going to read her comment. When the hairstyles are worn by black women, even though it's the same exact style on us, it's unprofessional, urban, ghetto, on them, it's edgy, artsy, and whatever other adjective. 90% of the time, speaking on the braids specifically, black women wear them as a protective style because our kinky, curly, coily hair doesn't always fare well being out in the elements. 95% of this time, they're wearing it for fashion statements, which isn't really too much of a problem because there is the 5% of black women that wear them for the same reason. It just gets to being too much sometimes being judged differently for doing the same shit. Marjorie or Margaret Horn said this, and I appreciate her. Um, it's a conversation to be had. Everything she said made, made sense. Everything. So I think you need to understand, we need to understand why um, it's important. Like, we need to talk about this. Like, why is it that a white woman can wear this and it, when a black woman wears it, it's, it's seen as unprofessional stuff. So that's what we're talking about. It's not necessarily we don't want her to, like, be wearing it clean and stuff. It's just that, girl, when I do it, it's looked as unprofessional. When I go to an interview or something, I wear something like that, it's looked at like, oh, girl. But if a white woman wears it, she might be working at Urban outfielders. I don't have time for it today. Miss me with the bullshit. Next week's episode, Yandy Mifisi is going to be having a conversation, Mendeecees, I know, uh, about why we ain't talking no more. You ain't called me in five days, but Yandy, you was just talking to him with no cord in the phone, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand what's the issue, sis, but they have the conversation. Girl, Miss Yandy says she's going to call out Judy for getting her some young peen, honey. We're going to see how that goes. Sophia and Dream Doll exchanging milkshakes, and they are not exchanging coins, okay? Make sure y'all checking out kingareese.com. Make sure you also also checking out the latest episode of For the Culture Podcast, honey. Tell me what y'all thought about this episode of Love and Hip Hop New York, and I'll talk to y'all later on tonight. Bye. What more do you want from me?